Lesson 13.1c, Finding the Area of a Rhombus. A rhombus is a special parallelogram. It fulfills the requirements to be a parallelogram of having opposite sides that are parallel and congruent, but goes beyond that by having four congruent sides. And sometimes a rhombus is a square when it has four right angles. A rhombus is a quadrilateral in which all sides are congruent. That means that the lengths of the sides are equal and opposite sides are parallel. Sides A, B, C, and D are all the same length. Sides A and C are parallel. Sides B and D are parallel. A diagonal of a polygon is a line segment that connects two non-adjacent vertices. Non-adjacent means they don't have a common side. So this vertex and this vertex, these are non-adjacent. They don't share a side. These are adjacent vertices. They're sharing this side as a common side. So a diagonal is a line segment that connects two non-adjacent vertices. A rhombus can be divided into four right triangles and they can be arranged into a rectangle. Notice we have one of the right angles on the upper side here, another right angle here, but these two right angles are on the inside and it makes a rectangle. And the base of the rectangle is the same length as one of the diagonals of the rhombus. And the height of the rectangle is half, right here, this little piece right here, this is the height of the rectangle, it's half the length of the other diagonal. So here we have one diagonal that's the length of the base of it, and this little half diagonal, because here's this is a diagonal and here's a diagonal. This little half diagonal is the height of our rectangle. And the area for a rectangle is base times height. We would multiply the base times the height. So because we're doing only half of this diagonal, we've got our base, which is this diagonal, that's the base, multiplied by half of this diagonal. And we can multiply in any order and the product will be the same. So we could multiply this diagonal sub one to diagonal sub two and then multiply it by half or multiply half to this one. But this half multiplied by this second diagonal is the height for this rectangle. Does that make sense? So for your notes, the area of a rhombus is half of the product of its two diagonals. We take the length of one diagonal, the length of another diagonal, and we multiply that by half, and we get the area for inside of the rhombus. So let's walk through some examples. It's telling us to find the area of the rhombus. And it's telling us that D sub 1, the first diagonal, is 24 centimeters. And D sub 2, the second diagonal, is 17 centimeters. We substitute the values for D sub 1 and D sub 2, and then multiply. We have half times 24, well that's 12. We multiply that to 17. We can do a little math on scratch paper on the side. We get 204. That is in centimeters, we can see. So we have 204 centimeters with a little two exponent to show that they're square centimeters. We can also write it as square centimeters. Let's try another one. The orientation of this rhombus has changed, but we still know that this is a diagonal and this is a diagonal. It's telling us that the first diagonal, D sub 1, is 34 inches and the second diagonal, D sub 2, is 14 inches. So remember, when we have a variable and you see this little number, we just learned in the last lesson that that's a subscript and that helps us differentiate between this D and this D. We know that that would be the first diagonal, that would be the second diagonal. Okay, so we're going to substitute the values for d sub 1 and d sub 2, and then we're going to multiply. So we have a 34 and a 14. We put 34 and 14 in. Half of 34 is 17. 
Now we do 17 times 14, we get 238. We see it's in inches, we know we have 238 inches squared or square inches. Let's try it without a diagram. It's telling us to find the area of a rhombus with diagonals that measure 16 centimeters and 6 centimeters. So we have our two numbers for our diagonals. We have a 16 and a 6. We substitute them into the formula and half of 16 is 8. We multiply that to the 6. We have 48 centimeters square. And just remember to always use square units for area. We're finished with lesson 13.1 and lesson 13.2 is broken into two parts. The first part is finding the area of a triangle. We'll also find the area of a right triangle. Have a wonderful day and I hope you'll join me next time. Bye.